In order to succeed, you're gonna have to fail a lot of times along the way. Just don't let it stop you. Do we do the things, are we currently doing things in our life that are moving the needle towards the life that we wanna create? Because if I'm being honest with you, I think the goals are actually overrated. I'm a very big believer in you don't have to reinvent the wheel. If someone else has done it, you can do it as well. And the first time that this was brought to my attention, it was when I was younger and I read a book uh, called Think and Grow Rich. And in Think and Grow Rich, I read it and realized that it doesn't matter what I was born with, what my circumstances were, what my circumstances are. What matters is that I put the right pieces in place to create my life. And if I do, I will eventually get what I want. And so when I look at people who are successful and success is a very relative word, it can mean something different for you than it does for me. It could mean for you joy or peace or happiness or a great family or cars and traveling and clothes and freedom or whatever it might be. It's different for everybody. But when I look at every single thing in life, I realize that every single thing in life has steps to be successful. And so when I say success, it can mean a lot of different things for a lot of different people. But I'm gonna go through the eight different things that I've seen from people who have had success in their life that I would see, uh, and I deem success is to have ultimate freedom, freedom to do what you want, when you want, with who you want. And so when I say eight things that people do who are successful that unsuccessful people don't, my version of success is the ability to do whatever you want, whenever you want, with whoever you want, at any point in time, anywhere in the world, all of that. So let's dive into it. The first thing that I find with a lot of successful people, not every single one of them, but like 80 to 85, 90% of them, is they have some sort of consistent waking up early and having some sort of a morning routine. So when I was doing research on this, I was like, let me just see what time successful people wake up. And so I found people like Richard Branson, who's a multi-billionaire, wakes up at 4.30 every single morning. Tim Cook, who's a multi-billionaire, wakes up at 4.30 every single morning. Howard Schultz, who is the guy who started and is the CEO of Starbucks, wakes up at five o'clock every single morning. So I'm not saying that you have to wake up at those times, but the reason why they wake up at those times is because they have time for themselves, whether it's to read, whether it's to journal, whether it's to work out, they have time for themselves to be intentional, to grow into who they want to be. So they have some sort of a routine to growing themselves into who they want to be. And they do this before they go into work and they have thousands of people that could report to them. They literally just work on themselves first. And so they wake up early. And the thing that, that's interesting is a lot of people are like, you know what, like, I don't, I don't know if I can wake up early. I'm, it's hard for me to wake up early. I'm more of a night owl. And what I've found is that if you want to wake up early, you can wake up early. You just have to start to reset your circadian cycles, which are now used to going to bed late if you are a late sleeper. If you go, you go in, you go to bed late and then sleep in late, you've just set your cycles that way. They can also be reset. And so if you sit there and you spend an hour watching Netflix every single night, imagine if you just were able to cut that out and wake up at least an hour earlier and spent that hour on yourself instead of watching Netflix or instead of watching YouTube or instead of watching sports. If you cut that hour out at night, went to bed an hour earlier, woke up an hour earlier and spent some time on yourself, what would that look like for you? So ask yourself the question, do you feel that you wake up early enough right now to have time specifically dedicated to you and your own growth? If the answer is no, I would recommend building that into your life. So that's the first thing. The second thing that I found that's really interesting is that they read almost every single day. There's an article that came out a few years ago that says the average CEO reads about 60 books per year. 60 books per year, which means the average CEO, which is at the highest of their company, the highest of their industry, reads 60 books per year. That is more than one book per week. So then you gotta think to yourself, how many books am I reading? How much am I going out and trying to learn? How much am I going out and trying to grow myself and try to learn from some of the most successful people that have ever existed? The beautiful thing about life is that everything that you want to learn about any industry, about self-development, about mastering yourself, about religion, spirituality, all of those things, all of the books have already been written that you could want to read from some of the smartest people that have ever lived. Why don't you just start reading those books? And so ask yourself, how often do you read? And if you were to put yourself as, a, as a, a goal, how many books do you want to read every single month? Figure out that number, write it down, and start to follow it. The third thing that they do is they exercise consistently. They understand that there's a mind-body connection. If your body is not in the right place, there's a pretty good chance your mind is not going to be in the right place. Your mind and your body have a constant communication at all points in time. You know, a good example of this is, you know, if you eat something really heavy in the middle of the day, do you get real tired after lunch? Do you have that 
you know, that 2.30 feeling where you're like, oh man, now I'm really tired. I need to get some coffee. Maybe it's not that you just are naturally feeling that way. Maybe it's that you're eating something that is making you feel that way. And so when I say they exercise consistently is because they understand that when you exercise in the morning consistently or in the, the evening consistently, whatever it is, your body will start to create more energy throughout the day. And the more energy that you have throughout the day, the more energy that you have to go and accomplish your goals, whatever your goals are. And so one of the things that they do very consistently is work out all of the time, every single day, four times a week, five times a week, do some movement practice. They don't stay still very often. So the third thing is they exercise consistently. The fourth thing is write their goals down consistently as well. I've told you this story before if you've heard it, but in the 70s, Harvard did a study on people that were graduating from Harvard with an MBA. Of this graduating class, only 3% of them actually wrote down their goals. And then 10 years later in the 1980s, they followed up with all of those people and they found out that the 3% that wrote down their goals with pen and paper were 10 times more successful than all of the other 97% combined. So 3% of people who wrote down their goals were 10 times more successful than the other 97% combined. Why is that? Well, because it becomes real when you write it down with pen and paper, you put it down, it becomes physical in this world. It becomes something that you can see and something that you can work through. And a lot of times people will set goals and then they'll never write their goals down and they'll never work, they'll never work through their goals to figure out how to get to those goals, which is usually the biggest detriment to why people don't hit their goals. But the example I always like to give is like, if I, if I gave you a, a multiplication problem and said, hey, what is uh, 127 times 43? Majority of people listening right now would not be able to do that off the top of your head. But if I gave you pen and paper and said the exact same number, what's one, four, one what did I say, 147 times, 127 times 43? You could figure it out by doing multiplication that you learned in what, fourth grade, third grade? And so when you can take something out of your head and put it on a piece of paper, and see it and start to work through it, it takes things that seem very complex and make them much more simple to work through. And so when you write your goals down consistently every day and work through them, just the same way that if you were to build a business plan, you're not gonna try to do a business plan in your head, you're gonna write it all down. Why would you make it any different than getting your goals from your head, physical, on a piece of paper and actually start working through them so that you can get more clear on exactly what it is that you want, so that you can get a date of exactly the dates you're gonna hit it by. And so when you deal with number four and you talk about writing your goals down, ask yourself, how often do you write your goals down? And if it's not often, maybe you should just develop the practice of writing your goals down every single day, of working through them every single day, making it part of your journaling practice. That's the fourth thing they do. The fifth thing that they do is that they have mentors. I read an article years ago that said the average person who becomes a millionaire has an average of seven mentors before they become a millionaire in some sort of way. And so if you're out there and you're looking around and you're like, I don't have any mentors or I need some more mentors, I have one mentor. How can you start going out and finding more mentors? The reason why this is important is because they can shorten your learning curve from you know their 20 years of knowledge to two years for you. So they can literally collapse time. This is the importance of hiring a coach sometimes, hiring a mentor, is that someone who's further along in the process than you are, that's already done what you want to do and already made the mistakes that you will eventually make, if you were to just learn from them, you can shorten your learning curve, not have to go through their mistakes, and then also at the same time, see exactly what it is that you need to do in order to get where you want to go. I have a, a friend that I've recently become uh, friends with and, and she runs a business that's in the same industry as me, but hers does $50 million a year. Mine is at five. And so I'm looking at that going, holy sh she's light years ahead of me. What does she know that I don't know? How could I provide value to her based off of what I know in my business? And then how can I get value from her based on what she's doing in her business so that we can make this something that we work on together? And if you're out there and you're like, well, I don't have a successful company. What am I going to offer these people that are successful? Well, there's a lot that you can offer. And that's the thing is that most people think that, oh yeah, I'm not a millionaire. What would I, what value could I possibly give a millionaire? I'm not someone who's successful. What could I possibly give somebody who's successful? One of the things that I found is that once people have hit all their goals, they checked all their box, they've made all the money, they've done the traveling. One of the things that lights them up the most is helping somebody else succeed, is passing it, passing it along, paying it forward for people who are in the same situation. So don't think that you don't have any value to give your mentors, because once you start getting mentors, you'll find what it is like to be able to help somebody that's further along the process than you and also be helped 
by someone that's further along in the process than you. You know, there's two different types of mentors that I always talk about. Number one is paid and number two is free. And you can figure out, I think there's value to both of them, right? So I have a lot of friends that are, that are great mentors of mine that I don't pay them anything. And we brainstorm and I help them, they help me and they're free mentors, but they don't feel obligated for me to succeed. You know, they want me to succeed, but there's no obligation on their side to have me succeed. But I also have paid mentors that I pay. And when you pay somebody, there is more of a feeling of obligation and also more of a consistent meeting up process. Like with my mentors that I pay, we meet every single week. So if you have a mentor or if you have a coach that you hire, we meet every single week. So it's consistent. Every seven days, we're talking, we're working through things. Every seven days, we're talking, we're working through things. And they see it as their obligation to help me succeed because I am paying them good amount of money to be able to do so. And so that's the difference between a paid mentor and a free mentor. I find value in both of them. So that's number five. Number six is positive self-talk. And you know, we're not born just super positive people. Well, pro actually, let me reverse that. We're born positive people, then the world kind of destroys it out of us and we have to go and refine that positivity. And so you're not gonna wake up every single day and just be super excited to go and take on the day. But how can you start talking to yourself in a way that motivates you to start moving forward and taking more action? How can you start talking to yourself and building yourself up? You know, it's it's a lot, it's it's hard enough to succeed in this world. It's even harder when you have someone talking in your ear the entire time. And that's what a lot of people are doing is constantly talking to themselves. And so how can you build up a, a system of positive self-talk to be more intentional with all of the talk that you do inside of your own head. You know, I, uh, I gave this example a few years ago, I made a, a video where I had a, a big bucket of water and just clear glass that it was in and there was a bunch of dirt that we put into it. And if you put another bucket of, if you put, you know, a cup of clear water inside a bucket of dirt, it doesn't change it much. If you put another cup of clear water inside a bucket of dirt with water, it doesn't change it much. But if you take a garden hose and you put that garden hose and it's constantly flowing and constantly flowing, eventually the garden hose is gonna move the water so much that it eventually moves all of the dirt out. That dirt is equivalent to all the negative thoughts that are inside of your head. And so when you look at it, you go, it's not about like thinking positive sometimes or having a couple positive thoughts. It's like, how can I freaking brainwash myself to be positive all day, every single day? Like it's intentional, it's all day, it's all day, it's all day, it's all day. When I notice myself slipping and saying something negative myself, I pull myself back. So you gotta ask yourself, what part of your self-talk needs improving? That's number six. Number seven is they don't worry about failure. Failure does not exist in the mind of a successful person. Failure does not exist until you've completely given up on something. And that goes into number eight, which I'll talk about in just a minute. But when they look at quote unquote failures, as most people would call them, they don't see them as failures. They just see it as falling. Oh, I messed up. And a person that's successful, they failed more times than the average person has succeeded and failed together. Like it's just like they have, they fail and they fail and they fail. And the creator of Honda says that success is just 99% failure. So a person that's successful looks at failure and what a normal person sees as failure and just sees it as, ah, oh, it's just, you know, the, the universe showing me this isn't the right path. Got to move. I got to change. I got to take a detour. The destination does not change. The route just might change a little bit. There might be a little bit of a detour to get to where I want to go. And so they don't worry about failure. They don't think about the missed shots. They think about how they're going to make the next shots. You know, if it's like the, the quote with Michael Jordan where he says, you know, I've failed so many times. I've missed thousands and thousands of shots. I've had the game on the line and I've missed the shots during the game on the line. And I failed over and over and over again, but that is why I succeed. So how can you realize that in order to succeed, you're going to have to fail a lot of times along the way. Just don't let it stop you. Which then <clears throat> goes into number eight, which is they just don't stop. They just don't stop. They decide what it is that they want and they decide that they're either going to get there or they're going to die trying. You know, if you want to know the secret to success, is just outlast everyone in your industry because most people are going to give up along the way. The majority of your competitors are going to give up. I guarantee you that. So if you just don't stop, you'll eventually acquire the skills, you'll eventually acquire the knowledge, and you'll eventually acquire whatever it is that you need to be more successful than everybody else is out there. And so if you make the, the decision in your head, of, it doesn't matter what happens. It doesn't matter how many times I fall. It doesn't matter how many times I talk negative myself. It doesn't matter how many times I mess up. It doesn't matter because I'm going to continue to improve and continue to get better and I'm not going to stop. 
eventually you will be successful. That's just the way that it goes. When you look at the list of people who have failed, like massive successes in this world, but they failed over and over and over and over and over again. If you look at the list of Abraham Lincoln, how many times he failed and all the crap that he went through in his life, and then he became president of the United States, you know, you start to realize, oh man, a lot of very successful people end up failing tons of times along the way. The only difference is they don't allow their failures to get in the way of the success that's about to come. They don't let their failures stop them from going on the path that they're on. The destination stays the same. They just continue to make different detours. So you got to ask yourself, and this is a question I want you to think of, how different would your life be if you just didn't stop? If you, know, if you, if you didn't give up on that thing that you gave up on years ago, how different would your life be right now? Think about that. We're going to talk about clearing out all of the BS, all of the stuff that's holding you back that doesn't make sense, and prioritizing your mission, prioritizing your purpose, prioritizing your passion, whatever it is that you're trying to do. And I'm going to talk to you about how to make your success a little bit easier. And I'll say this before we dive in. We're all busy. I mean, if you're listening to me right now, have you ever used the phrase, I'm too busy? Oh, I'm so busy right now. Have you said that in the last week? You said in the last month? Oh, I'm just so busy. I've said it a bunch of times. And we all have things going on, you know? There's work, there's kids, there's bills, there's cleaning the house, there's doing chores, there's laundry, you've gotta mow the lawn, you've gotta do your clothes, you gotta iron, you gotta put them back on the, put them away in the dresser, you've gotta hang them up, you've gotta, we have so many, as humans, we do so many things. We gotta eat, we gotta go to the bathroom, we gotta drink water, we've gotta put stuff inside the refrigerator. Like we've got so many things, so many different actions that we do as humans. And with that, we all have so many excuses that we could give as to why we are so busy and we have too many things going on to create the life that we want to. We have all of the excuses, but you have to think about this. We do a lot of things, but the question is, do we do the right things? Do we do the things? Are we currently doing things in our life that are moving the needle towards the life that we want to create? Think about that for a second. Are you taking action or are you taking action towards the desired outcome that you want in your life? Are you doing the needle moving activities to change your life? Because if you're not, your life is going to be exactly the same 365 days from today as it is right now, unless you're doing needle moving activities. You could still keep doing the laundry, and I'm not saying don't do the laundry, and you can start to keep doing all the things that you need to and get those things done, but it's not needle moving activities. There will always be things that you have to do. You have to sleep, you know, you have to brush your teeth, you have to do those things, you have to do them, but are you prioritizing the things that you need to get done over everything else? Let me give you an example of what I mean, because all of us are different and we all have different things that we need to do. And that's what we're going to dive into today is this conversation came up in a coaching group that I run. Um, I teach coaches how to grow coaching businesses. I teach literally coaches how to grow online coaching businesses. It's called Business Breakthrough. And somebody asked a question uh, a couple weeks ago and we were talking about this where she was saying, as I'm trying to build my business, I'm running out of time. Like I'm trying to do this. I'm trying to run, run out, I'm trying to build this, but I'm running out of time. And I had another friend that was saying, hey, I'm trying to lose weight. And I'm just trying to get in the shape that I want to, but I just don't have enough time once I get done with work. And I heard this a couple times and I was like, huh, this is an interesting thing that people say. I should probably talk about this. So I was in this conversation with my friend who's trying to lose weight and they were saying, I don't have time. I try to get as much, I try to work out as much as possible, but I just run out of time so many days. And I was like, that's interesting. And I said to, I said to her, I said, um, just, just kind of curious, um, you know, you have children, you know, there's seven and five. Um, how many days have you run out of time and, and not fed them? And she's like, what? And I was like, how many, how many times, you know, let's take your seven year old, for instance, over the course of the seven years that he's been alive. What is that? Uh, it's two, 20, 2300 days, something around there, 2200, 2300 days. How many days have you been so busy that you, you were like, ah, I ran out of time. I didn't, I didn't feed my son. She's like, um, none. I was like, really? Huh? <laughs> That's interesting. There's never one day where you're like, I'm too busy. I can't feed my son. And she's like, no, that'd be ridiculous. And I was like, oh, so what you're telling me is that feeding your son is a priority for you. She's like, absolutely. I said, you will only succeed at losing weight when you put losing weight and working out and eating healthy as a priority for you. I'm not saying that, that going to the gym is as important as feeding your son. But what I'm saying is in your brain, it needs to be as important. 
you would never go to sleep with your son not being fed. You should never go to sleep without the workout if that's what you said you were going to do. You don't run out of time. You just don't plan your time efficiently to make sure that the action is taken to create the body that you want, to create the life that you want, to create the business that you want. So the problem is, it's not that you don't have time for the action, it's that you're making up excuses as to why you're too busy to actually take that action. She was like, oh, that makes so much sense. Working out hasn't been a priority for me. And I was like, I know. There are some people that working out is a priority and they do have two kids exactly like you do. What's the difference? Their mindset around the priorities. I'm not saying don't feed your kids. That's the exact opposite of what I'm saying. I'm not saying don't do the laundry. I'm not saying don't clean the house. I'm not saying don't run your business. I'm not saying any of those things. What I'm saying is, is that the most important actions, the needle moving actions in your life need to be as much of a priority as feeding your children. Feed your children, of course, but also get your ass to the gym. Feed your children, of course. If you don't have children, do you have a dog? Do you have a cat? Do you have a bird? Feed your animal or feed your child, whatever you might have, and go to the gym. Build your business and feed your child. Do all of those things. Don't go to bed until the action is done. Same way that you never go to bed and not feed your children is exactly the same way that you should never go to bed and not have that action done. And so I asked her that question, and the reason why it was, it's, a, it's super, super important to think this is because the reason why you need to have this reprioritization in your mind is because of the fact that if you don't, you're not going to do what needs to be done, but it needs to be that, that important for you. So we could all make to-do lists right now that could be 75 things long, but are those things gonna be all needle moving activities in your life? Absolutely not. So how can we look at the things that we know are needle moving and prioritize those over everything else? And it's very simple. You plan the life that you want, you figure out what actions need to be taken, and then you prioritize those actions over everything else. You don't go to bed until they're done. That's how committed you need to be to your goals. I do not go to bed until X is done. I don't go to bed until my workout is done. I don't go to bed until I make a hundred cold calls. I don't go to bed until I have, you know, eating the food that I need to. I don't go to bed if if I, uh, I don't go to bed if I haven't told my spouse I love them. Whatever it is that you're trying to, I don't go to bed unless I've meditated for the day. Whatever it is that you're trying to create, you need to prioritize those goals and they need to be that important to you. And you don't go to bed until they're done. And it comes down to this simple phrase. If it's important to you, you'll find a way. If it's not, you'll find an excuse. How many people We've seen movies on it. How many people have run out of money? They've been on the streets. They haven't had whatever it is that they need, but they've done what needs to be done in order to feed their children. Maybe they steal. Maybe they borrow some stuff. Maybe they figure out a way to make money because they need to pay their kids. If it's, they need to pay their kids, they need to feed their kids. If it's important to you, you'll find a way. If it's not, you'll find an excuse. You'll never run out of time to feed your children. It's a priority. It gets done no matter what. And that's the mindset that you have around it. As a parent, I'm going to feed them. I'm going to take care of them. What is supposed to be done will be done. That's what your life is built off of. Well, can it also be built off of that? Can, can the, the things that are most important that move the needle also be built the same way in your mind? And so I wanna ask you this question. Let's take the next three months of your life. Let's think about the most important activity over the next three months in your life. Do you prioritize it? Just ask yourself, and it's be honest. Do you prioritize it? Is it a priority for you? How many times have you tried that thing and given up? Let's say weight loss is a thing. How many times have you tried losing weight, but you've given up? How many times have you tried losing weight and you've given up? How many diets have you tried, but then you gave up? How many times have you said, today's, this is the year. This is my year to get in shape. My New Year's resolution is I'm going to lose weight. And then you've freaking given up on it. Think about that for a second. What do you do on a daily basis though? That's not a priority. And so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna figure out number one, what is your priority? Write that down with pen and paper. If you have your pen and paper, what is your priority over the next three months? That is a needle moving activity. I don't need you to figure out a hundred different things. I just need you to figure out one for right now. What is that one thing that is a needle moving activity for you? Write it down with pen and paper. Now I want you to think about all of the things that you do on a daily basis that are not priorities for you. Think about it, doing the laundry, you know, maybe it's uh, doing the dishes, watching TV, scrolling on Instagram. Think of every single action that you take that is not a priority for you. And then ask yourself a couple questions. Are there any of these things that could be outsourced? Like, is it possible that these things can be outsourced? Like for instance, I have a lawn. I don't mow my lawn. I did at one point mow my lawn, but I stopped. Why? 
because it takes a couple hours, a couple times, it takes a couple hours over the course of a month. I could use those hours doing something to, that is the priority for me. Now, some of you are like, yeah, but I don't have the money to pay for someone to mow my lawn. Okay. Well, is there anything else that could be outsourced? And if you were to outsource mowing your lawn and use those, let's call it four hours over the course of a month, could you make more than that four hour, that, more than the money that you pay the person to be able to actually pay them so that you can go and do the thing that is the priority for you? Is there stuff that could be outsourced? You know, if we're talking about cleaning the house, is it possible for you to have someone clean once a month that would at least help to have them come every couple of weeks? Is there a way to outsource some of the things that are not a priority for you? That's what I want you to do. So you're going to make a list of all of the things that you do on a daily basis and add to this list throughout the day as you do things. Oh, I do this. Oh, I do this. Oh, I do this. Oh, I do this. That are all of the things that are not a priority and start to ask yourself, is it possible for me to outsource these? Is it possible that you can ask someone that you live with to help with these things? Yeah, maybe, maybe it's someone that you live with. Maybe you can assign one of your children to do the laundry for the month. Maybe you can assign one of your children to do the dishes for the month. Is it possible for you to assign somebody that you live with some of these tasks? What about work? Is it possible for you to assign somebody that you work with to do some of the tasks that you're doing that you don't need to do that are not a priority for you? I know people when they get promoted, some people will completely change the things they do. Some people will do, do the job that they don't need to be doing because they don't trust other people to do it. So if you're at work and you're doing things that are not a priority for you to move the needle, can you outsource that to someone else? Is there someone else that can help you? And then when you look at the list of things, what are those things that you actually need to stop doing, right? So if you're like, oh, I don't have enough time, but then you're watching Netflix for an hour every single night, where did that freaking time come from? To say that you don't have time, but you have a Netflix subscription and you watch it, that's bullshit. You're lying to yourself. You can keep lying to yourself if you want, but the numbers don't lie. And if the, the success in your business or you're on the scale or whatever it is, they don't lie. And so could you prioritize your life differently and say, oh, you know what? Yeah, maybe over the next three months, I won't watch any Netflix. I'll prioritize this one thing and just go for this one thing. What would your life look like if you decided to switch some things around and actually start doing that? And then you start asking yourself, am I being busy or am I being productive? <clears throat> so this is important to think about. We're busy all day long. We all are because we're all doing something. Even if we're doing nothing, we're still doing something. If, even if we're just sitting around watching Netflix, we're still watching Netflix. Even if we're just sitting on the couch scrolling on Instagram, we're still on Instagram. We're still doing something even when we're doing nothing. Even if we're just staring at the ceiling and breathing, we're still just breathing. Right? We're doing something always. We're all so busy. But the question is, are you busy or are you productive? Have you ever had a day where you're just, you're like a chicken with your head cut off. You're doing things, you're doing things, you're doing things, you're doing things. And then you get home or you lay your head down and you're like, man, I was busy all day and I feel like I got nothing done. Have you ever had one of those days before where you're just so damn busy, but for some reason you feel like you got nothing done? Well, do you want to know why that is? Because you were busy you weren't productive. And so if you feel like you're busy all day and you're not moving the needle, it's because you're not working on the things that are gonna, that are priorities for you, should be priorities for you, that are gonna move the needle. And so simple tip, if you've been listening to me for long enough, that'll just help you conquer this real quickly. It's the simplest thing. I tell people all the time and when they actually start using it, they're like, this is so simple and it also helps so much. You make your to-do list every single morning. You go through and you look at it and you say, okay, what is number one, what is number two, and what is number three that are the number one, number two, number three most needle moving activities that I put down on this list? You circle them. Okay, that's number one. Okay, that's number two. Okay, that's number three. And then what you do is you take a three by five card. You write down number one, you write down number two, you write down number three, and you put it in your back pocket and you don't go to bed until all three of those things are done. That's it. It's that simple. And that is how you have a productive day is because when you feel like you're busy, but not productive, it's because you're not checking off the boxes of things that are important. You're just checking off your, <clears throat> excuse me, you're just checking off your to-do list. And that's not going to do anything for you, just checking off to-do list. And I know so many people, because I say this all the time and people always laugh, so many people out there, you made your to-do list in the morning, you wrote it all down, you're like, cool, oh my God, I got my, my, my to-do list, I've got 32 things on my to-do list. And then you go and do something that's not on your to-do list and you come back to your to-do list and you write that thing down on your to-do list and then you cross it off so you get that feeling of, hey, I did it. That thing was probably not a priority for you. <clears throat> it's probably not the needle moving activity that you needed to take. So when you 
create your to-do list every single morning, and then you figure out number one, number two, number three, and you put them on a three by five card, you say, I do not go to bed until this is done. I'm going to focus on these three things, and those are the three things that are gonna move the business, the my relationship, my family, my body, whatever it is you're trying to work towards. These are the three needle moving activities that I need to get done today. And you don't do anything until number one is done. Then you don't do anything until number two is done. And then you don't do anything until number three is done. And then my question to you is, do you take those things and you put them into your schedule? Do you stick to a schedule in the first place? Or you just kind of run around the chicken with like a chicken with your head cut off? These are not like, hey, if I get time for it kind of things. Like I was telling you about my friend who's trying to lose weight. If I get time for it, I'll work out. If it's something that's a, I get, if I get time for it, it's not a priority for you and you don't really care. You don't think to yourself, you know, well, I will feed Jonathan if I get time to. No, it's like, it's going to be done. So your priorities should never be a, if I get time for it kind of thing. Your priorities are, I don't care what happens. I'm going to get it done today. And if you do that, those are the ways that you're going to move the needles the quickest in your life, in your business, in your body, in your relationships, in your finances, in your wealth, everything is that you figure out what the most important things are and you crush them every single day, no matter what. And they are just as high as a priority for you as everything else is in your life. But I'm going to tell you what I think is actually not what I think, what I actually know is more important than your goals to hitting your goals. So there's something that's in there. Your goals are important. I don't want you to act like they're not important or that they're stupid, but they are the least important part of achieving your goals. So the least important part of achieving your goals is knowing what your goals are. So if you've been listening to my podcast long enough, I always say the most important thing, number one, for anything else, you've got to be really, really, really clear on exactly what your goals are. The more clarity that you can have around your goals, the more likely you are to hit it. But I'm going to give you a four-step process to making sure that you get your goals accomplished. And knowing your goals is the first thing, obviously, but it's not the most important thing. Because if I'm being honest with you, I think that goals are actually overrated. And not only are they overrated, I think that a lot of times for people, goals are actually demotivating because they think of where they currently are. And then they look at their goals that they have for five or 10 years in the future and the money that they want and the house and the happiness and the family and success and everything that they want. And it's so, it seems so far away that it's like, oh, it. why would I even do it? Like, uh, it's so far away. I probably won't even get there. And then they don't even take any action towards that goal. Goals can be overrated. And today I'm going to teach you what's more important than them. I'm going to walk you through the process of exactly how to hit your goals by not making them the most important thing. So step number one, is you've got to decide what you want, right? You've got to get very clear on what your goals are. The more that you can see the goal and the more that you can understand what the goal is, the more likely you are to hit it simply because you know exactly what it is that you're shooting for. If you've been listening to my podcast long enough, you've heard me say this many times. If I were to take you and the number one archer in the world, put you up next to each other and have you both shoot at a target, he's going to beat you every single time. But if I take him, I blindfold him and spin him around and he has no idea what direction he's shooting in, you have a better chance of hitting that target simply because you can see it. Not because you're skilled, not because you're better, but simply because you can see it. So a lot of people don't hit their goals simply because they don't even know what their goals are. They're very abstract. They never put them down on paper. And back in the 70s, there was a study that was done for graduating MBAs of Harvard. And they found out that only 3% of those people graduating from Harvard actually wrote their goals down. They followed up with all of them 10 years later and the 3% were 10 times more successful than the 97% who didn't write their goals down. So simply writing them down is an important piece of the process. So the first thing you need to do is you need to decide what it is that you want. Get very clear on that. The second thing that you need to do is you need to make a plan. Okay, now that we've decided what it is that we want, now we've got to make a plan to get there. For some people, this can be really hard because once again, they still feel too detached from their goals and their goals don't necessarily feel real. It's like, yeah, it's what I want, it's a dream, but I don't know how to come up with the plan to hit that because it just seems so far away. And so I've got a secret for you. I call it future pacing. And so what future pacing is, is let's say, you know, in 10 years, I wanna be worth $10 million, right? And you could use this for any goal that you want to. I'm gonna future pace and I'm gonna say, okay, it is uh, August 2031 and I have $10 million in my bank account. This is how I got there. This is how I got here. And I'm gonna talk from the future self 
of exactly what I did. Oh, this is what I did with my, the people I surrounded myself. I stopped hanging around other people that, that were demotivating me, found some friends that were doing this. I started waking up at this time. I started doing this. I started getting more knowledge around this. I got mentors in this. And what happens is it, it makes it feel at least a little bit more real because I'm talking from the future, not like, hey, these are my goals way off in the distance. It's like, hey, I've already done this. This is how I did it. And for some people, just that little switch will allow them to stop thinking, oh, it's not possible. It will kind of silence their limiting beliefs, at least from a little while, because it's like, hey, I can dream that it's the future. I can pretend that I'm four years old again, that anything is possible, that I just created this amazing life. Here's how I did it. And so the second thing is to make a plan on how to get there. This is what I would say. The more detailed that you can be with your plan, the better because that's gonna make number three even easier. So if you say, in order to get to $10 million, I had to do this, 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 and this, well, now I've got a pretty good plan of what we need to do, what you need to do each morning in order to get there. Step number three is to figure out what daily actions need to be taken in order to hit that goal. I'm really big on action. I'm really big on just stop thinking so much, stop overthinking, stop with your limiting beliefs and all that bullshit that doesn't matter because none of it's true. Your limiting beliefs are as true as, as your, your goals in the future. You can believe in your limiting beliefs, you can believe in your goals in the future, whichever one is that you want, but you can't believe in both at the same time. And neither one of them actually truly exists, so why don't I just believe in the ones that sound more exciting? Number three is to figure out what daily actions you need to take in order to hit those goals. What daily actions? So like the person that would get the future that I want, this is what their life looks like. This is what time they wake up in the morning. This is how often they work out. This is the type of food that they eat. These are the people they hang out with. This is what they do with their day. This is how they talk to themselves in their head. This is their nightly routine. This is the type of dinner that they have, lunch. You go through every single detail and you start to make a plan of what would it look like for me to have, to, what would I have to do daily how would I have to operate as a human daily in order to be the person that could accomplish goals that are that amazing? And you start coming up with a very, very detailed plan. And then the fourth thing is that you wake up every morning and you make a plan for that day. This is something that I guarantee 95% of people listen to my voice right now. You don't make a daily plan. You might make a to-do list or a checklist, but you don't make a daily plan of, okay, you know, I know where my future is. I know where my goals are. I know where it is that I'm going. But now I need to figure out what I need to do today because nothing else matters. I don't give a damn about tomorrow. The only thing that matters is actually today. So why don't I really milk today for every single thing that I can? I'm gonna make a goal today. And the easiest way to do this is this. It's very simple. You make a to-do list of everything that needs to be done today, knowing that 90% of the things that you put on that list are probably not gonna be done today. And you have to be okay with that. Know that, that majority of things are not gonna be, you know, that you're gonna put down your to-do list today are probably not gonna be done today unless they absolutely have to be done today. You look at that to-do list and you figure out what your number one, number two, and number three most important goals are for that day of what has to be done. What action items are the most important action items for the day? And what you do is you take a three by five card, a cue card, and you write number one and you write it down. Under that, you write number two and you write it down. You write down number three and you write it down. You don't do anything at all until number one is done. That's it. I don't care if you get to number two or number three. As long as your most important thing gets done each day, you're going to start doing really well. And then after number one is done, now I can move on to number two. Now I can move on to number three after that is done. The reason why I want to put on a three by five card is because I can take that three by five card. I can put it in my back pocket. I can leave my to-do list at home. I can leave my phone in the other room and all I have to focus on are these three things on the piece of paper. And think about this. If you were to accomplish your three most important things every single day, over the course of a year, that's over a thousand of your most important things being executed every single day. What I care about for hitting your goals is not the goal itself. Once again, you need goals. Yes, not trying to make them, you know, to demonize goals. They're needed, but they're not the most important thing. Why? Because consistent daily action is the most important thing. Get off your ass, stop thinking so much, stop overthinking, just freaking do it. The beautiful thing about your limiting beliefs and your lack of belief and your excuses is that you don't have to believe in yourself in order to take action. You don't. You don't have to believe in anything in order to take action. You just got to get your ass up and moving. You've just got to physically move your body because your mind is thinking. Your body 
will do whatever you tell it to do. And so if your mind is like, oh my God, I don't know if I can do this. Oh, my limiting beliefs. I'm not smart enough. I'm not good enough. Not pretty enough. I don't know if I'm going to be a good enough parent. Blah, 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 blah. You can have all of that BS run through your head the entire time that your body's moving and actually taking action. So if somebody thinks, oh, my limiting beliefs are holding me back. No, your limiting beliefs are not holding you back. Your thoughts about your actions that need to be taken are actually what's holding you back. And so if you just move your body in whatever it is that needs to be direct, the, the direction that needs to in order to be successful, that's it. It will eventually work. And so what you have to realize is there's three things that are the most important pieces to hitting a goal. Number one, direction, which is knowing what the goal is, what the end result is you're trying to hit. Number two is action. And number three is time. It's so it's so ridiculously simple how simple life is, but we make it so hard of like how simple success is, but we make it so hard because we put our mind in, our mind gets in the equation. It starts making a bunch of stuff that doesn't matter. You need direction, you need action, and you need time. That's it, direction, action, time. So let's say for instance, I talk about it a lot because it's just a simple thing because it's we can put numbers to it. Let's say you wanna lose weight, okay? lose weight. Let's figure out what is the direction that we're going towards. That would be considered the goal, right? The direction. Okay. I want to lose 20 pounds. So when I, when I say I want to lose 20 pounds, what direction would I need to be heading every single day, every single week in order to lose 20 pounds? You know what? I'm going to do four workouts a week. That's part of my direction that I'm going to. Okay. Four workouts a week. We got it. I'm going to know what meals I'm going to be eating for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and all of my snacks in between. I'm gonna know every meal going into this next week. That's direction. Part of my direction is I'm gonna actually decide that I'm gonna remove all of the food that doesn't serve me or isn't part of my meal plan. It's gonna be gone. It's not gonna exist in my house. I'm gonna get rid of all of the sodas. Only thing I'm gonna drink is water. There's not gonna be any alcohol. There's not gonna be any you know, margaritas, there's not going to be not going to be any beer, there's not going to be any wine. So now I've got a pretty good idea of the direction that I need to head in. Okay, now the next thing I do need to do is I need action. Okay, what have I decided? I've decided that I need to work out four times a week. I need to figure out what days those are, what times I'm going to be working out, and I'm gonna need to put it in my schedule so I don't try to get out of it. The action that I need to take, just make sure my ass is in the gym, when I say I'm going to be in the gym. And to make it even better, if I have my workouts planned, all I have to do is show up, look at the workout that I already have planned, and then just execute. That is action. What else? I need to prep on Sunday all 21 meals that I need to make. I need to go to the grocery store. I need to take a couple hours and make sure that it's done because if it's important to you, you'll find a way. If it's not important to you, you'll find an excuse. So I'm gonna take some time. On Sunday, when I could be hanging out by the pool or at the beach or at the lake, drinking some mimosas and having brunch with my friends, I could do all that if I wanted to, but that's not in the direction of my goals. So I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go to the grocery store. I'm not saying don't enjoy your life either. Enjoy your life. But if your goals are important to you, you need to get these things down. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk into the grocery store. I'm going to buy all of the food that I need and I'm going to take a couple hours and I'm going to meal prep and put all of those meals into glass containers that I can just take with me whenever I leave and I go to work. That's the action that needs to be taken. What's the other action? Remove all of the crappy food that I've already decided I'm not going to be eating. That is the action. So I've got the direction. Now I've taken the action. What's the last piece? Time. Just be patient. That's it. We think that we're supposed to have the life that we want, the body that we want, the success that we want, the business that we want, the relationship that we want, like that. Like it's just going to happen. It doesn't happen that way. That's not how life works. You know in your head right now that going to the gym four times and planning out seven days of meals on day seven, you're not going to be the, in the best shape of your entire life. You're not going to be ripped and sexy and ready to hop in a bikini or to be in your bathing suit or have six pack abs. You're not going to have those in seven days. You know that. So as long as you just have, what did I say earlier? Consistent daily action you're eventually gonna to get to wherever it is that you need to go. Consistent daily action, consistent daily action, consistent daily action. I don't care what's going on in your mind. All I care about is that you move your body into the direction of the goals that you're working towards. Direction, action, time. Let's say that you wanna save $6,000 this year. You've never saved any money before. and You only make 30 grand, 40 grand, 50 grand, and you're like, I wanna save money. I wanna finally be able to save money. Okay, direction, all right? I need to stop going out to eat so much. 
Okay, that's a little put, gonna put me in the direction I want. I need to automatically deduct from my paycheck. That would help me if I just had an automatic deduction that went into a separate bank account and I need to check my bank account every day. That's pretty good direction to get me towards saving that $6,000 over the course of the year. Okay, that's direction. Action, um, I need to go and actually set up the automatic deduction to pull out $100 out of my bank account every single paycheck, you know, and actually out of my paycheck to put into a separate bank account is what I mean. Uh, I need to make sure that I go to the grocery store so that I have enough food so that I, I can have the food in my house so that I don't feel like I need to go out to eat. I need to make sure that I set up everything that I need to, to, to make it as easy as possible for me to save money. And I need to stop, you know, going to the mall on the weekends because when I go to the mall on the weekends, when I'm bored, I end up spending money. If I can just remove a couple things and I can make sure my direction is in the right direction, if I can make sure my action is in the right direction, then I just gotta wait. As long as my consistent daily action is in the direction of where I'm trying to go, I'm eventually gonna get there. That's why they always say that direction is more important than speed when it comes to your goals. As long as you're heading in the right direction, you'll eventually get there. You just gotta ask yourself, are you headed in the right direction with everything that you're trying to do? So you need direction, you need action, and you need time. Things take time in this world. Nothing happens right away. And so you've just gotta to learn to be patient. As long as your consistent daily action is headed into the direction of where your goals are and where you're trying to go, you'll eventually get there. That's the beautiful thing about it. I remember when I was 20, 22, 25 years old, I was like, why don't I have, why am I not a millionaire yet? Why am I not as successful as I wanna be? Why, 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 why? And now that I'm 35 and you know, 15 years of working on myself and my business has finally happened, I'm like, oh, I just needed to be patient. That's it. As long as I woke up and I made sure that my action was in the direction of the life I wanted to create, eventually I'm gonna wake up and I'm gonna get there. And it might be 35, it might be 45, 55, whatever it is, it might take time, but you just have to be patient knowing that you're headed in the, the right direction. And that's more motivating because you know you're in the right direction than looking at your goals and going, oh my God, it's so far away. It's so far, I don't know if I'll ever get there. And now I'm not motivated to work. No, I just need to focus on what I need to do today. So you need to figure out what direction you need to go into, what action you need to take, and then you just got to wait. Goals take time. What's more important is, is having the standard of being the person who follows through. Having the standard of being the person that checks off the three things that need to be done every single day. I wanna become the person who takes the actions that they need to. I wanna become the person that doesn't listen to their limiting beliefs. I wanna become the person that doesn't care about other people's opinions. I wanna become the person that takes consistent daily action. I wanna become the person that doesn't overthink anymore. You know, there's nothing to overthink. Just, just move, take action, that's it. Consistent daily action. Because if I'm worried about consistent daily action, you know, it blows my mind how often people are overthinking things that they don't need to overthink about when all they could possibly be doing is just what they could be doing instead of thinking for a while is just go, you know what? I know what I need to do today. I just need to focus on today. I know what I need to do today, focus on today. And if you do that for long enough and you give yourself long enough, two, three, five, 10 years, 15 years, you'll wake up one day and go, holy sh I actually built the life that I wanted to because I was headed in the right direction the whole time. I took the action that was in the direction of the life I wanted to create. And with time put into that recipe, I created the life that I want. Hey, thanks so much for watching this video. If you want to learn even more about mastering your mind, click right here and watch this video as well. Your mind actually starts to switch to, I don't think this is something that I could do. This is something that I am going to do. Like there's nothing that's going to hold me back. Goals without a deadline are simply just dreams.